All right. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to the Witch Doctor. Brian here. How you doing? Um, happy holidays. Hope things are going well for you in your holiday season. Um, and just extending my testing on uh, primer tools. Um, didn't mean for uh, any of this to be any kind of product test or or brand test, uh, but uh, kind of turned into that. I had people send me, uh, oh, hey, test this tool, test that tool. Everyone was, you know, a lot of people were curious. Is this one rim thickness dependent? Uh, hey, I heard this one's not. Can you look at it? So um, I added two more tools to the list of tools that I've tested. So um, tested a couple of bench mounted tools. One you can see here in the back, the Lee APC um, works really well. Um, and then a couple, several hand handhelds, and I've added two more. The first one is the K and M, and um, the way you adjust that is uh, in terms of seating depth is you just kind of screw the head basically and find the right depth um, and just leave it there and then prime prime it. Um, it has this feature where probably hard to see. Um, probably just go to K and M's website. <laughs> they probably have all the diagrams or videos or probably you'll see other videos of how it works but there is a little piece that rises up and it sort of holds the brass up into the rim of um of the uh, shell holder so it seems to kind of push that the the shell up lock it in place and then the uh the actual uh, punch there then pushes the primer into the pocket so that seems to be how this K&M works. Um, I have seen they have one with like a dial indicator on it where you can actually measure primer height. Um, so if you're concerned about primer height with your primers, um, I think they have some kind of add on for that. Anyway, so thank you again to those who've been sending these priming tools. I appreciate it. You'll be getting them back really, at least these two will be getting back to your home really soon. Um, in terms of the data, well, the K&M performed really well. Um, in my last tests, I sh demonstrated uh, the sort of way that I tested these. I set the tools to seat at eight thousandths depth. Um, I took a handful of cases uh, and measured their rim thickness numbered them i'm not going to go over the whole procedure again but if you are curious about you know, haven't seen my previous videos on this and you are curious about my method uh, just re go check out the other videos um so anyway set the tool and then went ahead and just started priming them measured primer primer depth and then what i did is i checked for the cumulative error so how much either too much or too little did the tool seat these 20 um, from 8 thousandths depth. The total error for the K&M tool was 19 thousandths. So um, that is uh, definitely lower than many of the other tools that I tested. And this tool was not correlated with rim thickness. So the K&M, uh, I can tell you now, is not rim thickness dependent. It did not correlate with rim thickness, okay? So um, there you go. That's the story with the K&M. And I'll just go ahead and you know display data um, on the screen here in terms of you know what I what I found in terms of correlations and things like that. But that's it for the K&M. So uh, performed well. It's not rim thickness dependent. Then I got the my <laughs> someone sent me the new Sinclair. Uh, if you watch the other videos on my you know priming tools you'll see that the old Sinclair did extremely well um, it has a system where you put the brass into the shell holder and you sort of turn it down and it, and it holds the brass piece down so um, and that's how it's not rim thickness dependent because it holds the the brass piece completely down it doesn't the, the rim doesn't float at all it gets kind of locked down into place and then you bam you seat your primer um, this one, I'll say, was a little bit more difficult to adjust than some of the others. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I love my PMA and my 21st century. They're so easy to adjust. Um, this one was a little more challenging. Uh, what I had to do was, uh, and the person who sent me this tool also sent me these shims. 
I had to like place shims in here to get it get the tool set to the right depth okay so uh, and it took a lot of <laughs> a lot of testing to do that I mean it, not anything like it didn't take all day I mean it wasn't an extensive uh, massive undertaking to get it set up but it, it certainly took some time and but the good news is once I got it set up it was very easy to use um, and this one had a cumulative error of 11 thousandths which is almost exactly the same as version number one of this tool so interestingly enough uh, version one performed really well had a cumulative error of 10 thousandths version two had a cumulative error of 11 thousand so um, both of these Sinclair tools uh, did extremely well and again I think it's just that design where it just clamps down on that rim holds it down and then bam you seat the primer so yeah so there you go cumulative error of 11 thousandths for the new Sinclair so there it is adding two more priming tools to the testing and both of them were not rim thickness dependent neither of them correlated with that so um, the data basically shows there was no correlation there with these two with rim thickness so good stuff anyway um i also mentioned some things you know if you do have a rim thickness dependent tool it is not the end of the world i mean i think um there's probably some people that i know that have kind of you know oh wow let me get my hands on a you know something that's not rim thickness dependent that's great i mean in fact this lee tool is not rim thickness dependent and i love it i use it for all my uh bench you know when i'm loading right here at the bench but um i have to load at the range for some of my short range bench rest matches and so um i do plan on using you know my either my k and m or i'm sorry either my pma or my <laughs> 21st century um, unless I can get my hands on and I, my preference is after doing all this testing is the new Sinclair I really want to get my hands on one of those but they've been out of stock now for a while I have no idea when they come in stock but um, so until they do until I get one definitely going to use either my 21st century or my PMA um, like I said the PMA and the 21st century are super easily adjustable you just turn this thing you know clockwise if you want a deeper uh, uh, seating or you turn it you know counterclockwise if you want it shallower same thing with this one and this the 21st I like this one a lot because it clicks and each click value is a half a thou so pretty precise um, anyway so what my plan is if I don't have a you know um, rim you know non rim thickness dependent uh, hand priming tool for loading at the range is I'm just gonna measure rim thickness on my brass and only use brass pieces that uh, put me within the the realm of of uh, you know um, what I call the sweet spot where I've I've shot several five shot groups uh, to get my statistical sample up to where I can you know run the data and actually uh, know you know with a high degree of probability that any difference you know I find in the group sizes is, is significant. Um, shot that test as well as others and found that I have a pretty good range of seating depth um, or anvil compression is really what it is I'm compressing that anvil a certain amount I like to the, my sweet spot that I found is if I compress the anvil from uh, 8 to about or from I'm sorry 7 thousandths to about 10 to 11 thousandths that's my sweet spot window so all I need to do is you know measure my pocket depth um, check out my primer height which the primer heights are pretty darn consistent I mean there's probably on average with thousands of primers probably a thousandths variation I mean not not much so I'm not really worried about that um, but I'll just find ones that give me a rim thickness uh, to where I can set the tool and all of those pieces of brass with their respective rim thicknesses will still get me within the sweet spot with some of these tools that are uh, rim thickness dependent so um, so there's ways uh, it's not uh, you know if, if it's not, it's not uh, the end of the world if your tool is rim thickness dependent you can certainly make it work and 
Um, that's what I'll have to do uh, until I get one. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we will be doing some more testing. I think I mentioned in um, um, one of my videos, I'm looking now at case head thickness, and I've been measuring that with these rods, um, sort of measuring case head thickness with these. So um, that's kind of up next on deck. Have some preliminary data on that, but not enough to make any conclusions, or I don't want to make any, you know, any uh, conclusions on that right now. I need a much larger sample to draw any conclusions on it. But um, that testing should be interesting. We'll see. We'll see what it says, and so please tune in for that. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning into this, and uh, please like, subscribe, share, and also join my Patreon. Uh, I keep repeating this in every video, but my Patreon. Uh, is where we have really good interactions. Uh, everybody on there seems to genuinely, you know, be curious. They genuinely want to, you know, uh, do things to make them better shooters. We're all having great interactions. Uh, one of my patrons is one who sent me this K&M tool and this uh, Sinclair to test out. So it is a lot of share of information. I post tons of videos and data on there that I don't put on YouTube. Um, so it'd be great to have you there uh, as a patron. Um, it's like I said, it's also a really good environment of, of learning. Um, you go on some of these forums on social media and you know, you got your keyboard warriors and you got uh, any number of people with any number of, you know, different philosophies. But uh, the, in the Patreon page, it's very clear that people are there to let's learn from each other and let's look at data and let's talk about things in, in a constructive way. So uh, certainly a good spot to be. So please join if you can. All right, everyone. Take care. Happy holidays.